Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. I'm Dr. Tuti from the Department of Psychiatry, UKM Medical Center. In this video, I will be talking about the psychopharmacology of antipsychotics and I will be focusing more on the pharmacodynamics rather than the pharmacokinetics of antipsychotics. For the outline of this video, I will start with the topic dopamine and its role in the etiology of schizophrenia. Then I will talk about the types of antipsychotics how they are similar and how they are different from, and how they differ from each other. Lastly, I will talk about how to prescribe antipsychotics. What are the issues that we have to consider when we prescribe antipsychotics? Now let's review what is dopamine, how is it made, what is the role of dopamine in the body. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. Uh, which is a chemical that sends signal from one neuron to another. Um, and this signal is sent through the synaptic cleft. Uh, dopamine can be found in the brain and also um, the rest of the body. There are several dopamine systems, which we'll see in the next slide. And in the brain, dopamine dis plays an important role in motor control, motivation, arousal, Cognition and reward. So let's look at this diagram. Okay. This is the presynaptic neuron, this is the postsynaptic neuron, and this is the synaptic cleft. As you can see here, um, the precursor of dopamine is tyrosine, it's converted into dopa and it's converted into dopamine. Um, it is then kept in um, vesicles, synaptic vesicles, until neurotransmission occurs, where then the dopamine is released into the synaptic cleft. It then binds into the synaptic receptors here, uh, each causing different effects. If you can see here, there are five receptors here. D1 D and D5 is Classified, in, classified together. Receptors D2, D3, D4 are classified together. Dopaminergic neurons mainly concentrate in certain areas in the brain. There are four major pathways. Okay. So the first pathway is the mesolimbic pathway, where the neurons project from the ventral segmental area to the nucleus accumbens in the ventral striatum. So this is the pathway that is involved in activities such as um, involving motivation, pleasure and reward. So po probably the next time you play Angry Bird, um, this is the, just remember this is the pathway that is involved. The next one is mesocortical pathway, which projects also from the ventral tegmental area and ends in the prefrontal cortex. This pathway is involved in cognition and executive function. So the next time you study hard for your psychiatry exams, when you go through your materials in school or G, this is the pathway that is involved. In this pathway, there are branches that terminates to the ventral medial pathway, ventral medial parts of the prefrontal cortex. And this pathway is involved in uh, emotions and affect. So next time when you feel excited when you read your psychiatry textbooks, uh, this is probably the pathway that is involved. The third one is the nigrose triatal pathway, which control motor movements uh, and projects from the brainstem and substantia nigra, and the axons terminate at basal ganglia. Okay, so this one controls the motor movement. The last one is the tuberoid infundibular pathway, where the neurons project from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary betri gland. This neuron involves in. So, what do we know about neurotransmission of dopamines in the brains of individuals with schizophrenia? According to the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, 
Schizophrenia is the result of hyperactivity of dopamine in the brain. So the blue diamonds are the dopamine neurotransmitter and there's lots of it in the synaptic cleft. So this happens particularly in the mesolimbic pathway. And this is when the person experiences positive symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations. Similarly, in individuals who take stimulants such as LSD, studies have shown that there is also hyperactivity of dopamine. That is why those who take LSD experiences delusions and hallucinations. However, in the mesocortical pathway, it's a different story. Now I'm referring to schizophrenia here. Instead of having hyperactivity, uh, there is deficit, uh, there is hyperactivity of di dopamine system in the mesocortical pathway. And that's when the patient experiences negative and cognitive symptoms. It's a bit confusing. So, uh, therefore, based on this knowledge, um, Dr. Stahl, a renowned psychopharmacologist, he proposed that uh, instead of the term dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, he proposed the term dopamine hypothesis of positive symptoms of schizophrenia, which may be more appropriate to explain the etiology of schizophrenia at this moment. Now that we have understood the concept of do dopamine, how it works, where it is located in the brain, we can move on to talk about psychopharmacology of antipsychotics. In general, there are two types, uh, the typical antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics. An example of typical would be haloperidol. An example for atypical antipsychotic would be olanzapine. One way of trying to understand any concept when we are learning something new is uh, by comparison, comparing between A and B. So let us compare uh, in what way the two classes of antipsychotics are similar. Yes, all antipsychotics block the T2 receptors. And how do we know this? Well, antipsychotic was discovered by chance back in the 1950s by two anesthetists. They discovered clopromazine, which was used at that time for sedation prior to surgery. They found that patients with mental illness had recovered and improved to normal functioning. And later in the 1970s, it was, dis it was discovered that antipsychotic property was D2 receptor blockade. Let's look at this diagram. These are the D2 receptors at the postsynaptic neuron. That's the light green squares. And in psychosis, there is hyperactivity of dopamine, as you can see in the blue diamonds in the synaptic cleft. So when the patient takes an antipsychotic, it binds to the D2 receptors blocking dopamine from binding to the D2 receptors. So when that happens in the mesolimbic pathway, it would reduce the positive symptoms. But when it happens in the nigrostriatal striatal pathway, it would lead to extrapyramidal symptoms such as tremor, bradykinesia, and rigidity. There are other motor effects as well, such as dystonia, akathisia, and also tardive dyskinesia. When antipsychotics block D2 receptors in the tubular infundibular pathway, dopamine is not able to inhibit prolactin release, which leads to hyperprolactinemia, immunoria, and sexual dysfunction. Let's go back to the antipsychotic molecule. Antipsychotics do not only block D2, they also block other neurotransmitters such as muscarinic cholinergic receptors M1, 
which would cause blurring of vision, dry mouth, and constipation. And also alpha adrenergic receptors and histamine receptors, which leads to sedation.